Hi, I'm Cameron Oglesby. I'm a senior studying environmental science and policy, focusing in ecology. I also am in the earth and ocean science minor, and I am in the policy journalism and media studies certificate. My area of interest is, I'm going to say widely, environmental communications. I'm an environmental communicator and storyteller. My goal as an environmental communicator is to inform, but it is also to engage. It's about disseminating environmental information, science, politics, degradation, justice, all of these different concepts that relate to environmental spaces and landscapes and people's relationship with planet. The larger goal is just to get people involved, to get them in the conversations, to get them thinking via video, via art, via audio, via digital and print and writing and the written word and all of these different types of media. Uh, explore all possible avenues for getting people to engage with these things because it's important. My Enviro Art Gallery, it's something that I've worked on since high school and I just love it. Art as this emotive medium for environmental education, just another way of getting people engaged in these topics. It's a feat in organizing. It gets bigger every year, but every time I take it to a new place, it's amazing how much it resonates with people, all of this environmental artwork. I think that's just what keeps me doing it every year. When I was in middle school, we had to propose some sort of bill or piece of legislation for our civics and economics class. And I chose to do mine on fireflies. They were this really meaningful experience for me as a child. I loved viewing them, understanding that firefly populations were at risk as a result of human actions, as a result of light pollution. I decided to propose a piece of legislation that would reduce light pollution. So I did a lot of research. I did a lot more research than I needed to do for a seventh grader. And when I went in front of the class and proposed this bill, almost everybody rejected it. And I, 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 I was shocked. Why don't people care about this? When I asked people why, they said, it's because it had nothing to do with people. That was, that was a real moment in my life that just hit me. Unless the environment centers people, um, people are less likely to care. It has nothing to do with them in their everyday lives. And I think that's where it really hit me that I needed to engage people if I ever wanted, I, if I ever wanted to have any sort of impact or make any sort of difference. I was fortunate enough to grow up with a backyard and with quite a bit of nature around me. And I loved being outdoors. I loved just sitting out there and meditating on the natural sound. A lot of people don't have that opportunity because of class or because of race. And that's where the justice element comes in. I came to Duke wanting to study ecology, and I think one thing that really stood out was that division between scientists and politicians and the general public. A lot of scientific writing is translated for an educated audience, an audience that already understands the materials and understands the issues. It's not designed for people who have no idea what's happening and who need a bit of a push to even care about what's happening. And those are the people who you need to get that information to to actually make anything happen. The role that environmental communication plays is in translating that information for a public who deserves to understand what's happening. I think that's the big thing. That's the big gap. This is why I think journalism and, and environmental communications also has become such a big part of my work. Welcome to Bridging the Gap. This series hopes to shed light on the future. The Bridging the Gap doesn't focus exclusively on the environment, but it does take advantage of this moment of racial justice and reckoning that's taking place to really highlight the experiences of students across the institution, students of diverse identity, students of color. Our next episode is about race in the environmental spaces. It looks at the inherent systems in place in environmental spaces that often leave students of color out of the conversation. I think we've reached this moment this past summer, this racial reckoning that took place in a lot of environmental organizations and even Duke University and the Nicholas School coming to this understanding around the need to incorporate social justice and people and narratives into their work. The environmental justice work I've tried to do at Duke this year, we're trying to create 
real lasting environmental justice infrastructure and infrastructure around transparency and the creation of an environmental justice campus committee that really just bridges the gap between the Nicholas School and every other affinity group and entity relating to race, justice, culture, what have you at Duke. Creating a, a common space, a common resource by which entities that are not associated with the Nicholas School can come together on topics relating to environmental justice. We want to make sure there's more environmental justice in the curriculum. We want to make sure there's more environmental justice in the programming and events that are taking place and the people who are being brought to campus. Diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice is forever. It cannot stop after perhaps the, the salience of this moment of racial justice right now ends. This is ongoing work. The book that I'm writing is a collection of narratives based on interviews that I've had with people. It's about the relationship that they have with nature and connecting people to the places that are meaningful to them or their families or their legacies or their ancestry. The larger goal of the work I've been doing is to just get the conversation started in a way that is meaningful and long lasting. I hope to just bring people a bit closer to not just understanding but feeling, feeling that intrinsic relationship and making it a part of your decisions and making it a part of your actions. People care and I think we underestimate how much people do care. And I think that gives me a bit of hope 